Hi, Mick. Mickey. Hey, Bob. How you doing? I'm kind of annoyed. Why is that, Mickey? Well, I, I, you know, I, I stopped by your house and offered to do a, to do a, a blogging hazard. You were sort of half-hearted about it, and the way I see it, Bob, it's KBW. Either you're in or you're out. Wait, what does KBW stand for? Keep blogging heads working. Okay. Having you know the, the teaching, it's your teachings, Bob. So you're the, trying to the uh, teachings, Bob. I mean, it's like whoosh. It's like either in or you're out. <laughs> So you're trying to blame me for the fact that it's been so long since we've had a dialogue, is that it? Well, that's right. It's half-hearted people like you, you know? I just have no business with you. I just I just cut you off. I don't have anybody like you in my area. You know, <laughs> see, here's the set. You're doing... This is some kind of... I realize this is some kind of allusion to something or other in the cultural zeitgeist that I don't get, right? Uh, well, you don't get it, Bob, because we get it and you don't. And who is we? The blogging heads people. <laughs> I'm in the dark, man. It is true that you're on the East Coast and we're making it very hard to do a dialogue with you because you don't, like, carry a camera with you, as a good blogging head should. And you said, well, hey, why don't I, why don't I, I'm driving down the, the turnpike, why don't I stop by your house? And, and first of all, it turns out I had done one the day before with somebody else, okay? Bob, I had a camera. How about I'm a little in. advanced planning? I'm in. What? I'm in. You're Shut out. Up. And B, it's a total pain to set these things up. But look, let's it's, don't it's, go into this. Let's don't go into this. We have no, we have no room for half-hearted spectators like you in blogging heads. Are you wearing a mask or something? I'm not wearing a mask. But you have a visual aid. <laughs> no, I don't have a visual aid. <laughs> you are so weird, man. Okay. Well, anyway, Mickey, it, it has been really hard going so long without uh, a dialogue with you. I had uh, a couple times I thought about seeking uh, counseling. Bob, you obviously don't recognize my Tom Cruise imitation. Oh, that's your Tom. <laughs> okay, yeah, I told you I didn't get the illusion. Okay. And, I mean, I look, I look like Tom Cruise, so people will get it right away. Many, many women have commented on that, Mickey. They will get it. Okay. Um, uh, anyway, I'm back to my normal self. Okay, so that was. A, we're going to talk about Tom Cruise later, and now, now I get that that extended joke, and I would just like to chuckle with appreciation if I could okay, work we, up a little we, mirth, we, but we, I really we, don't think we, I can we, right we now. Do that, um, but I do have Jill Sobule news. Oh yeah, I'm I'm a fan of hers, even though she doesn't remember you're, a conversation with me. But it's okay, really. Tell me about you're it. You're a fan of hers, and and now you have an opportunity to contribute to her next record because she set up a website, Jill's Next Record, which I'll post where she's soliciting people to give money so she can make a new CD. So did she finally return your email? She returned my email, yeah. Uh, but, you know, when she needed when she needed something. so that's Needed not, money. When she needed the thing that you weren't... Not the thing you were hoping she'd need when she returned your email. I, I worried that I offended her, and I didn't offend her enough not to send me a link to this site, which is actually very well done. It's very funny. We should uh, provide background for our... Our viewers, Jill Sobul, is it Sobul or Sobul? Anyway, she's know. a popular and very accomplished recording artist, possibly a little too far left for Mickey, but nonetheless, but she's, she's in the process of striking up an acquaintance with her. What? Well, she hangs around, you know, the, the left here, so I run into her. She seems very nice. She's a, she's, a, she's a lot of fun. Her songs are great. Her songs are great. And such is the state of the music industry that... She has to raise money on a website to make her own CD independently. But she's actually made a lot of progress. She wants seventy-five thousand. She's already up to twenty-six thousand. Yeah. So I'm sure you'll add. No. I'm sure you'll add a couple thousand more. Yeah, I discussed this with her in the conversation. She doesn't remember, but it's okay, really. You did. So Mickey. Um. But really, she's great. We'll link to several things of hers. You, um. You just okay. Anyway, never mind. Okay. No, really. Go ahead. No, no, you actually discussed raising money with her? No, I discussed, we discussed how the landscape of the, uh, you know, the, the, how, how the music market has changed, been changed by the Internet, and so that, you know, it's like the question is, how do you make money? And Michael, we didn't discuss Michael that. Hershorn and uh, John Fine discussed that on the blogging heads, which I haven't seen yet. They did, they did indeed. Um, um, okay, those are my preliminaries. Okay, well... 
Um, so, Mickey, uh, shortly before the New Hampshire primary, did you happen to get any prescient emails from friends? I did. It's weird, Bob. Before the day, bef- two days before the New Hampshire primary, I was thinking of you, Bob, and I was thinking how smart I was going to look when Hillary collapsed, and my prediction that she was like the Titanic came true. So in the midst of this great political event, I was thinking of you. Uh, And then it turned out, Mm -hmm. then a couple things happened. One, I I, um, drove around New Hampshire with a reporter who was the only person I know who seemed to call it and said, oh my God, the crying is going to work, she's going to win, I'm going to have to cover these people for the next four years. What a disaster. Uh, Only person I know who got it. The entire media was wrong and gloating and dancing on her grave. Except for you, Bob, who sent me an email saying, have you noticed that Obama's numbers go down every day, every poll that's taken after well, the debate? The, the key thing was, this was before the crying, and, and the key thing was that if you looked at what the... I was looking for a poll that came after the debate to see the effect of the debate. Right. I couldn't find one. But if you looked at how much of the polling period had been after the debate, the more of, the, of a given poll's period after the debate, the, 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 the more favorable it was toward Hillary. So right. that seemed to me to suggest that if you had taken a whole poll right after the debate, there would have been a pronounced favorable well, except uh, never, trend toward Hillary. Never, and, then the cry, and then the crying happened. It never got, and it never got the down, rest is history. It never got down to Hillary being ahead, though. That's the problem. No, they didn't. Well, well, well my analysis was pre-misty-eyed. It was the misty-eyed moment that then sustained the trend that I had picked up. Uh, I, I maintain. Uh, no, that seems to have happened, and there may have been a little bit of a Bradley effect of people lying and saying they were supporting Obama. I, I think there was. I mean, I mean, people in dismissing that have noted that, well, actually, Obama got as much as the polls had predicted. It's just that Hillary got a whole lot more. Well, yeah, right. But when all the the, uh, the undecideds or whatever break, well, you would expect at least some of them to land with Obama, right? Apparently <laughs> so, that's what happens with this so-called Bradley effect where people lie to bolsters. It is, is the, 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 this is where, where people say they're going to... We're, we're basically a black candidate does worse in the actual election than he's done in the polls. And what happens is that the polls accurately measure the black candidate support, but a lot of people say they're undecided when really they're voting for his or her opponent. Oh, interesting. And, and okay. so this fits the pattern perfectly, which is the polls nailed Obama's vote, but they underestimated Hillary's vote. The well, I was thinking he did pick up some of the undecideds, which implies that some of the people who had claimed they were going to vote for him didn't. But in any event, I think there was a little Bradley effect. I think uh, the debate helped her, and then I think the misty eyes obviously helped her. Although I think they will hurt her, certainly in the general, if she gets the nomination. Well, um, it, it, and you know... Go ahead. I'm not sure they've helped her... Uh, well, I don't know. What do you think? Well, I think, uh, well, I think a couple things. First, th- there's a question of how ignorant the voters are at the last minute. I had this argument with... I was actually on a radio show with Tom Broca. That's the best I've ever done. And um, uh, he... I yeah, claimed, and, and it doesn't sound like his career's going... Uh, well, anyway, he was go on, ahead. He was on Meet the Press. Um, so uh, his career's doing fine. But... Uh, the, he, uh, my point was that I thought the voters were pretty ignorant in keeping with the Jerry Skernick two electorates theory that the people who don't follow politics are actually less informed than they used to be. So they, they you know they wake up the last three days of the campaign and they see the men beating up on Hillary and Hillary crying and and these shock jocks coming down from Boston holding up signs saying "Iron my shirts" and they rally around Hillary. Uh, that's not a really informed choice. Mm-hmm. He said, "Oh no, the voters in New Hampshire are professional voters." So that's one of the controversies that's up up for grabs now. Um, the, the, on, on, the, on, the, on the Hillary crying thing, you know, it's, there's an interesting dynamic now, which is Obama and Bill are going head-to-head. So you have this sort this of... Is, this is great. Now, what do you think the logic of that? Apparently, on, on uh, a TV show that was aired this morning and taped a little earlier, Obama kind of challenges uh, Mr. Bill. Well, I think that works for him because w- 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 where's Hillary on this? She's a spectator while the two bulls fight it out. It's it's, yeah, of, it, it also solves the problem of confronting her without seeming to pick on a woman, which apparently hurt him in the New Hampshire debate, very good right? Point. Very and it, it does that, and then it seems to marginalize her, like, okay, this is between the men, Hillary. Can you step aside? And it kind of raises the whole question whether she's really 
a substantial candidate in her own right. Right. Although, so so I got to think that's the logic. Do you think it'll work? How's this going to play out? I don't know. Uh, that that will be one of the interesting questions. And of course, the media is fascinated by the by the Bill versus Barack dynamic, just because they it, it allows them to avoid talking about actual substance and character of the candidates, and it's the sort of story they love. So we're going to see a lot of that over the next week. But and I think it's clever because I, now, what kind of position I mean, does that put Clinton himself in, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think it works. The campaign probably doesn't want him to like step out and confront Barack, right? So he's got to look like, well, I don't really have the courage of my convictions, right. and maybe you know, I mean, he, he's in a tough spot. It seems think, like, but he, but he's pretty smart. He'll figure a way. You out. have to think this helps Barack uh, for the reasons you said, and it makes him look strong. And uh, you know, if he can take on Bill Clinton, well, then maybe he can take on anybody. Uh, and uh, as you say, Bill will be constrained in his ability to fight back. And Democrats, according to John Alter, are already telling him to pipe down. So uh, you have to think it helps Obama. I'm feeling I'm more and more pro Obama. Uh, you mean you mean as a voter, not as a predictor? As a voter, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. A A he got into trouble in Nevada because he was honest and thoughtful. The classic, you know. He went off message by saying that Ronald Reagan changed the course of American politics, which, of course, he did. Uh, and the Clintons irresponsibly jumped on him for that. Uh, he got into trouble for saying he had a messy desk when he does. Uh, Wait, was that more irresponsible than, than uh, complaining about Hillary saying Lyndon Johnson helped pass the Civil Rights Act? No, but Obama didn't himself jump on that. That, in fact, was first jumped on by Jim Clyburn, who is a neutral South Carolina legislator who might have been doing it. One of the interesting questions is, this whole race thing, which started with that, was that ginned up by the Clintons because they, you know, there's a, one, one of the, the big theories is they, they saw they were going down the tube, so they actually started a race fight on the grounds that then it would indelibly brand Obama as the black candidate, and he, he would, even if he won South Carolina, he'll lose everything else because the whites outnumber blacks. Uh, that, that seems too clever by half, but we don't know quite what Clyburn was thinking when he started this whole thing. It wasn't started by Obama himself, but yes, Hillary was pillory for being honest, too. I agree with that. Um, um, I, so, I, and so, so how do you, so, okay, so you're for I, Obama. I have, I, have two more, I have two more points. One is, if you read Charlie Peters' piece and Jonathan Cohen's piece, he's really a very good legislator. Uh, he, he accomplished some things in the, in the Illinois state legislature that were very difficult. His strategy of bringing people into the tent and and sort of cajoling them and giving them the little things, but holding firm on the big things seems to work. And the third is an interview that Hillary Clinton gave to Dave Leonard in the New York Times today, which was just creepy. It was like it was like she's going to apply this smarmy authoritarian "it takes a village" ideology to the whole economy. And it 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 it, 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 it read it and see if you got the same impression that I did. Yeah, I saw the piece. Didn't have time to read it. Um, yeah, I don't know. What, 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 what worries me is the electability issue. I mean, uh, I am haunted by the vision of John McCain beating Hillary Clinton in November. Um, uh, of course, in general, the polls show that in the abstract, Obama is more... Ele well, not even in the abstract. When they do specific pairings with Obama and it, Republican candidates it, in polls, it, he does better than Hillary pretty much across the board, that's right? That's correct. In all, in all, in all the matchups, if you go to Real Clear Politics, they have a whole page with the matchups. In all the matchups, Obama does best. Edwards does almost as well as Obama, and Hillary does the worst. And all the Democrats beat all the Republicans except for McCain, who beats them all. But McCain only beats Obama by a tiny fraction. Now, take that with a grain of salt because of this Bradley effect. Maybe the polls are wrong for polling about black candidates, and they really aren't, aren't going to do as well as the polls say. But if you just take the polls at face value, Obama does better than Hillary, which you would think because, you know, he doesn't have the baggage, he's not as polarizing, Republicans don't quite know how to run against him, he, he, you know, you would he, he, you would think he would well, do better. And there's, and there's, let's face it, there's there, there's the the uh, the psychology of sexism to, th that I think is much more pervasive than people realize it, uh, realize, I think almost everyone has kind of different templates for evaluating men and women um, and I, 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 I think that may be you know, you, problem you, you, have argue, in, in you, you have to argue that even women have this template, because women, of course, are a majority of voters. 
y yeah, but it may not be the same kind of two templates that men tend to have. That's an interesting question in its own right. And, and, and she seems to be doing fine among Democratic women, that's for sure. But I... I I mean, I think, first of all, I think this is the meme that Obama has to get out there if he's going to win. I mean, if you look at him, you know, you agree that right now he's playing serious catch-up ball, right? He's, he's got a ways to go. He's got to win South Carolina, and then he's got, according to the nationwide polls of Democratic voters, even if he wins South Carolina, he's got to make up real ground. He's got to get a big bounce out of that and sustain right. the bounce. And, and, the, and the interesting thing is if you buy that Hillary, the Hillary wants this race war, the, you know, the, a win in South Carolina on the basis of a monolithic black vote might hurt Obama. I mean, she might not mind that he wins South Carolina if if that indelibly brands him as the as the black sort of identity candidate. So he has a double hill to climb because the primary he, he might win and has to win is is a primary that might hurt him. In well, that, that is that is tough when you've got to win a primary and, and winning it will hurt you. I'd hate to be in that position. Um, um, but I kind of know what you mean. Uh, the the the. Uh, but uh, anyway, I mean, he, he's got to do that, and then and then wait. Tell me, uh, Florida. The deal is because the Florida Democratic Party is being punished or something. The candidates can't campaign in Florida, but are the delegates for real on, in the Florida Democratic primary? I don't think the delegates are for real. I They're think, not. So Florida no. doesn't matter, on which Repu comes on the heel. That's correct. On the Republican side, on the Republican side. Half, half the delegates count, so that's enough for them to campaign full force. On the Democrats, okay, so now, some people are saying that the Florida poll will be sort of a shadow Super Tuesday because nobody's campaigning. It's sort of a test of how the voters in all these, you know, twenty or some states on Tsunami Tuesday or whatever is are going to vote because th there's no time. The candidates have no time to campaign in all twenty states either. Uh, but basically, people are ignoring it. It depends how the media plays it up, obviously. If the media plays it up and Hillary wins, then that's good for her. So, so okay, so Obama's got to win South Carolina. He's got to get a bounce. He's got to sustain the bounce. And it seems to me he's got to inject something new into the dialogue here to really sustain that yeah. bounce. If you, because nationwide, the polls have him... They have Hillary in the mid, in the low to mid 40s, him in the low to mid 30s among Democrats, and it seems to me that the Super Tuesday states are, on balance, probably a little more favorable to Hillary than the average state because you got. First of all, she seems to be doing much better among Hispanics. You've got several states with big Hispanic populations in Super Tuesday, including a biggie, California. You've also got New York, which you would certainly assume she can win on Super Tuesday, okay? So, it seems to me he's really got his work cut out for him. He's got to, he's got to have, he's got to shake things up. Well, if, and, and I think cha challenging Bill is part of this. A couple, couple of points. If this is Gary Hart versus Walter Mondale, which it seems to be, with Obama being, you know, everybody says it's the black Gary Hart versus Mondale in drag, if Obama's the black Gary Hart, Hart trounced Mondale in California. So there's no reason why Obama shouldn't trounce Hillary in California for similar reasons. He's like Gary Hart without the character weirdness. So he should have a chance. But what, what about the Hispanic vote problem? And what about her right. poll well, numbers I'm in California? That. Okay. Uh, why can't he, if she's pursuing a jujitsu by branding him the black candidate and getting the white vote, why can't he do the same jujitsu by branding her the Latino candidate, and getting the white and the black vote. Uh, it, 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 you know, what's stopping him is that he really seems to believe in comprehensive immigration reform, but why couldn't, I mean, just a couple of steps to the right to distinguish himself from her, a couple of sharp remarks in the debate. Uh, Mickey, this is just so typical. You want all, you, your, your fundamental critique of all candidates in the Democratic and Republican Party is that they don't agree with you on immigration. And, and you think that, 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 that the adjustment all of them should make tactically is to agree with you. It I just mean, happens, I noticed this. It just happens to work out beautifully in this case. It doesn't work out beautifully. It, it does work out because, because, because why, can't he, why, why can't he, you know, grab some of that working class white vote and you want the solidify you want to the, hear white the problem? Vote. You want to hear the problem with your analysis? Sure. If this is what I think, is that immigration is a strong... It's a big issue in the Republican Party because it is fundamentally a, a, a nativist, not an economic issue. It, it, it's, like a, it's, it, it's like a cultural sensibility issue. It's not an economic issue because 
when you know okay the, there was a, there was an article bearing on this recently i wish i could remember where it was and 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 it was i think it was focusing on a primary state Boom. and it was saying that as the economy heads south uh working class voters are not making a connection between their new economic peril and immigration. If they lose their job, they're not losing it to some immigrant. They're losing it to somebody overseas if they're losing it to anybody discernible at all. Well, so it's just you're, you're, you're projecting your well, worldview onto Democratic voters. But, but the fact is, unless they just have a nativist sensibility, which I think is much more predominant in the Republican Party, it's just not a big issue for them. Well, I think that's just not true for black voters. There's, there's the black voters, the resentment of illegal immigration is both uh, economic, a lot of the, the, uh, right, right, the low-skilled jobs that blacks use to rise to the middle class are now no longer middle class jobs. The blacks know that, okay? But Obama uh, seems to have the black vote pretty much in hand, Mickey. You're, you're, you're talking about how can he expand it among white voters. How can he expand his appeal among white voters? I, I, it seems to me there's always a sort of populist, uh, working class uh, vote there that in this case is quite rational because all the studies show that even though immigration might boost the economy overall, it hurts low-skilled workers. It lowers the wages for unskilled work, which is logically what you would expect. So, uh, you know, you're saying that that, that uh, no Democrats. The question is, is you're there, saying that is no, there Democrats, visible... no Democrats can be anti-amnesty, and and that's just wrong. If if you were if you were right, all the Democrats running in swing districts wouldn't have come out against amnesty last year. Ask Rahm Emanuel; he's 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 basically trying to put off comprehensive reform for as long as possible. It's a key so this issue. Is in I'm what, sorry. Yeah, but if you're talking about cases where they were trying to appeal to black voters, as I just said, I don't think that's a big issue for Obama. He, he you know, it's nice okay, to pick up a that, few more. Fair but, enough. He, he or, Hillary has some black vote. Yeah. Well, anyway, and, uh, you know, you. I mean, you had this this blog post recently where you, um, where you. Uh, well, anyway, uh, maybe well, I'll, maybe it, I'll it find is, it. It is true that my my solution for everything is. To yes. go hard on against comprehensive yeah, immigration reform, but you know, just like my solution for the '90s was to go hard on welfare reform, and I was right, Bob. Welfare reform is you the were, key but to you all seem the even, But you seem even more obsessed with this than you were with welfare reform. Uh, it's hard to believe for less clear reasons. Um, well, the welfare the, mess was, it seemed to me, a, a really significant problem. The other, the other, the other thing that could help Obama, of course, is if Edwards endorsed him. The big thing that happened in the Democratic campaign is that Edwards was humiliated. Uh, in Nevada? In Nevada, he got like 8% of the vote, which translated into 4% after the viability rules were imposed. That yeah. looks pretty bad. Well, uh, he's about to lose the state he was born in big time. I mean, it's just it's just getting embarrassing. We think. So if he endorsed Obama, would that really help him, or would that reinforce the guys ganging up on the girl uh, meme? Uh, I don't know. It's he Well, there's... There's two questions. What, what what effect does dropping out alone have? Well, that helps. And, and that helps Hillary in South Carolina, unfortunately. That's 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 what I've been reading. But then, out beyond South Carolina, helps mainly Obama. You think if Edwards drops out? I don't know. I mean, his support is so low at this point nationally. I think that you, well, you, look, you have to think. Points. You have to think that it's it's not that he frees up a lot of votes for Hillary. He might give Obama one good day of coverage. Oh, look, there's, there's, there's about, he's getting about 12 percentage points in, in nationwide polls. If, if, if Obama could get two, two out of three of those, uh, well, that could make the... But that's going to go down after he gets trounced in South Carolina. So, if he well, gets yeah, trounced. But where, well, yeah, right, but then where will those votes go is my question, you know. The 12, the 12 are going to go start going somewhere. Well, right, but you're saying dropping out... The, vo the votes he will free up by dropping out when he drops out, who are committed well, to him, what, okay. will be in the single digits by that. What time. I mean is, is, as he sinks beyond the horizon by whatever means, whether it's people ignoring him, I mean, just where will the people now supporting Edwards well, go? That's one question, and then the endorsement question is kind of separate. Well, right now, yes, I agree. Right now, he seems to be holding out. To, well, first, he might win, okay? Got to say that. <laughs> Second, uh, he's holding out. Edwards to, might win South Carolina? Well, yeah, I, after New Hampshire, I ain't saying anything. I was yeah, so okay. wrong, and you were so right, Bob. The uh, but um, 
he seems to be holding out to be a role to play the role of kingmaker. But what does he want? He can't be the vice presidential nominee. A, he's secretary of labor. That that's, a, that's a good job for him, right? It's a fine job for him, but it surely is beneath what he thinks. Yeah, you know, I, I, Supreme Court. Is look, what, when you, when you look at things that would be I'm available, when you look at things that would be available to Edwards that would keep him alive, so he could be president in four or eight years, I don't think you get much better than Secretary of Labor, really. That could be that would work for him, but if he might want to, he might want to do what Earl Warren did and negotiate a seat on the Supreme Court. Oh God! Uh, imagine that's scary. <laughs> the, the key thing is about Edwards. I don't think he vets, Bob, and you know why I don't think he vets. Yeah, because there's a sex scandal in everyone's backyard. A simple paternity, according to you, a simple paternity test could resolve it, or partially resolve it. Okay, well, um, anyway, I, I, nobody's going to pick him for any job that requires a lot of vetting because uh, I don't think he survives that. But uh, Secretary of Labor. Well, but yeah, but that's not a problem in terms of promising a, him a job. I mean, Obama can promise him Secretary well, of like Labor and say, "Well, if there's a huge scandal with my first round of appointees, I'm going to weather it." It's uh, I, it's conceivable. Well, all you're really promising is to nominate them for the job, in a sense. Right, but if but you know anyway. he's going to go down in flames, then why nominate him? That, it's a little bit to get his endorsement. Yeah, no, okay, it's not crazy. Uh, I think that's all I have to say about Democrats. Yeah, me too. Um, you know, we, we, we both uh, should be patted on the back a little, I think, because um, in, uh, the, the thing we taped December 22nd, which aired January 1st, we both said that it was starting to look like, oddly enough, the only not wholly implausible Republican candidate was McCain. And this was before, well before Iowa, so certainly well before New Hampshire, and, and we weren't you know, the first to start see him, re you know, his resurgence was, was underway, but I, I, I mean, I remember actually thinking after that, I, I you know, we, we did our official New Year's predictions, and I predicted Hillary would get the, the nomination, and I was thinking I should have made the wholehearted prediction that McCain gets it, Hillary gets it, and he beats her, because that's I, my pessimistic prediction, I, that's my fear. I'm not sure McCain gets it. You know, he's wrong on a certain issue that is sort of important to the nativist Republican base, Bob. Right, I know, but um, it's like I, every candidate is wholly implausible for the Republicans, and well, it right, just they points... Have a, they have a bunch of bad candidates. Romney is not completely no, but it's also... Well, we, we don't have to revisit this one argument, but I think it's also a reflection on the party. The party's identity is fragmented. You cannot imagine a candidate that would just make well, sense across well, the board yes, for the Republicans. Of course you can. This is, a, this is an argument I have with the conventional wisdom. The conventional wisdom says the Reagan coalition is dead, it is fragmented. I think the Reagan coalition could conceivably survive with the right candidate, that it w first it was destroyed willfully by President Bush. It's not a question of it fractured naturally through some sort of internal dialectic. It was destroyed willfully by the war in Iraq and immigration reform. That busted the coalition. If he hadn't done those things, the coalition would still be alive. The, you know, the three you, you don't mean will. You don't. You don't mean he, he he invaded Iraq to destroy the Republican no, coalition. No, he didn't have to invade Iraq, and he didn't have to pursue immigration reform. The, 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 if he's just gone with the flow, he wouldn't have done. Maybe wouldn't have done either of those things. And the Republican coalition of social conservatives, fiscal conservatives, and national security conservatives would still be alive. The second problem is there's no. There happens to be no candidate who has all three of those stools. That doesn't mean you couldn't have a candidate that has all three. It doesn't mean they hate each other. It just means that candidate, who in this round was Fred Thompson, wasn't a very good candidate. But you could, it's not like it's, it's inherently destroyed. Much as I might like to have it destroyed, it's not like it's inherently destroyed. So Thompson is anti-immigration? Thompson, Thompson is, was, was, was very strong anti-amnesty, Bob. But, uh, but, but he objectively performed the role of taking out Huckabee for McCain, apparently. Most people right. seem to feel that he but, stole but, but, Huckabee. Okay, but just to finish this issue of Republic, the identity of the Republican Party, to the extent that he's anti-immigration, I think he antagonizes the business constituency in the Republican Party. But we, we had but this you didn't even have before. To raise, but you didn't even have to raise the immigration issue. You could have just let it sit there for another four years. Yes, if you make a big deal of immigration, mm -hmm. you're going to split the Republican Party. But Bush did not have to make a big deal of immigration. That was some. And I know I, I read on your blog that that's your advice to McCain is to vow that he will not raise the issue. He'll spend the fir his first term strengthening borders and not get around to comprehensive reform, to immigration well, reform until his second term. Well, that's right. Term. If everybody does everything I want, then it'll all be fine for them. 
And no, and there will be uh, no foreigners in the country too, as a kind of bonus. Bob, this sort of sorry, that was a cheap is, shot. Is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I really feel bad about that. Incredibly cheap. Um, I'm sorry. No, I mean, but it does make sense. He says, he says, I've learned my lesson. I learned we have to have border security first. People are rightly suspicious that what he means is two months into office, he's going to have the four border state governors declare, okay, the border's secure. We can have amnesty now, and. The way to allay those fears is to say, look, my plan is still the same. I eventually want to have amnesty, but I'll devote the first four years of my term to to doing the, what I now say is the precursor, which is securing the borders. And it will take some time, I mean, to get the employer sanction system working, to get the fence working, to get the message to Latin America that, look, we're really serious this time. All those things are, as we've talked, they are genuine precursors to, to some sort of uh, de facto or, or de jure legalization, and so it, it makes a logical sense for him to do exactly what I want. Okay, here, here's here's a here's a barely related point, just because it, it bears on uh, Thompson and McCain. But yeah, the, the thinking is that Thompson helps McCain by drawing support from Huckabee, and and there's speculation that Thompson may stay in the race just because he's friends with McCain, and who knows what kind of deal might be made. He may wind up, you know, Secretary of Labor or whatever. But um, but the uh, but 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 there's a couple of things I a couple of issues I have with that scenario. One is it's not it's not totally clear to me why he would not draw significant votes from McCain himself directly. Well, that's secondly, well, okay, go ahead. That, that's my problem in South Carolina. We don't really know that he still votes from Huckabee. Maybe his votes would have gone to McCain. They're quite similar. But uh, right, exactly. But um, but go ahead. And by that. By that same token, it seems to me it's not quite inconceivable. I mean, the Republican the Republican primaries could turn into such a traffic jam that it's not totally inconceivable to me that if Thompson hangs around, he'll start looking. I, I mean, he, he he it seems to me he and McCain are the two least implausible Republican candidates. Oddly, because McCain used to be thought of as a complete outlier. But so weird is this primary that it seems to me Thompson and McCain are, in a sense, the most plausible, don't you think? Well, Thompson was the, the, the most plausible. He, he seems to lack a certain, he seems slightly feckless. I mean, he, he he's perfect in all respects, and his speeches now are terrific, unlike they were at the beginning. But there's a certain sort of, you know, undefinable ballsy quality that he doesn't seem to have. And hard working quality. I mean, it, it, it's hard to see him ever getting that. That's the problem. Uh, now everybody says. But issue, issue by issue, though, he and it seems to me Giuliani, Romney, Huckabee just raise graver doubts with more people than, than even McCain um, and then Thompson. Issue by issue, kind of, and, and how much they're trusted on issues. But no, I think that's right. But he's just he's done badly enough that it's hard to see. It, 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 it's hard to see him being brought back by a broker convention. I agree that it might make sense for him to hang around and try to come back at, in some big later state if there are any big later states. The um, the problem with the keep stealing from Huckabee scenario is, you know, he, his high water mark was sixteen percent in South Carolina. He's just going to go down from there in Florida. He's not going to have. He doesn't. Ha he's not going to steal that many votes from Huckabee. He's going to get like you know six, seven percent of the vote. Uh, so I don't. I, it's not clear to me that he continues to perform such a valuable service for McCain. And as you say, some of those votes will come from McCain. Okay, so so you say Thompson's dead. You probably think Huckabee has no real chance nationwide, and you are not so sure that McCain. Uh, is going to wind up with nomination. So who's... Well, McCain is now... You, you don't think Giuliani's dead? McCain, you, you, you is think now, it's Romney? McCain is now behind in Florida, according to the Rasmussen poll. But to, really? to Romney, by about 5%. It's a, it's a, it's a four-way horse race. Everybody's bunched up there around 25%. Uh, Giuliani, Huckabee, and Giuliani's like 19. You know, Romney's ahead with like 30. McCain has 25. Something like that. And this is all a, a fast-moving, you know, robo poll. So it, it, take it for what it's worth. But it, in a, in a four-way race, McCain could easily come in fourth, as well as first. I mean, it's, it's just you don't know. Uh, it's easy. Romney is the most plausible national candidate, and he'll lose. But he's the most plausible national candidate. Yeah, but he's got. I mean, he, he's got the evangelicals suspect his Mormonism, and then the same. 
Well, I guess largely the same group of people suspects him on on the on the gra- on the flip flopping grounds in terms of the social issues, right? Right. Now he, um, although I think he's flip flopped a little less than than people say on the social issues. Uh, the uh, the um, you know the, the, what, what troubles people is this. He unveils a different theme for his campaign every week. Uh, he, yeah, he loses the evangelicals. So he'd have to make that up, but. You know, if the economy really is the number one issue, and I don't quite buy that it will be, uh, that plays to his strength, not his weakness, and plays to McCain's weakness. This, that's conventional wisdom. It just, he, you know, he, he's not completely implausible. He was governor. They didn't hate him. They reelected him. That always says something to me. But anyway. No, on paper. I mean, you know, he looks like the guy who would play the president yeah. in the movie. There's yeah. no doubt about the, that. The other, the other possibility, of course, is a broker convention that turns to somebody who we're not even talking about. Uh, somebody wrote an article where they nominated Terry Sanford of Connecticut, of North Carolina. Does he I happen to agree with you on immigration? I don't know. I'll have to check into that. But hmm. uh, um, A real lacuna in your research. Uh, but um, it seems, uh, you know, that's a possibility, too, of a broker convention, where if you've seen Gore Vidal's third man, it can get quite exciting. Well, I'll tell you, I really, I still have fond memories of my youth when, when you could go into a convention with the, with the nomination undecided. I remember 68, I guess, like sitting down with my TV tray and my pancakes with excitement to watch uh, the political convention because it was something was actually going to happen. I'd love it. 76 wasn't even decided on the Republican side. Remember Gerald Ford? Yeah, but I think I had lost interest in politics by then, or certainly in Republicans. Hey, you, discovered, um, you discovered drugs by then, that's right. Nah, Sorry. 76, 76. Um, <laughs> the, uh, so here's my question. Okay. I have two questions. One related to that, the brokered convention. Um, the superdelegates thing, it's like I see these, uh, these delegate tracking things where they count the superdelegates in somebody's column. Right. And it works to Obama's disadvantage because right. he's like ahead of Hillary in terms of just actual delegates that he owns. Right. But then they go and poll the super delegates, and uh, he comes out, um, you know, behind suddenly. And I thought the whole idea of a super delegate was like they're kind of supposed to actually stay uncommitted until the convention. But they don't. But they're fluid. They can always renege on their promises. So uh, they really shouldn't be counted. I agree. Uh, they shouldn't be polled. It's not fair. I mean, you know. But if you were Barack it, Obama, you'd sure as hell poll them. But the, the press. No, you wouldn't. He loses from that process. But he wants to know who's against him, who's for him. No, but I mean, CNN, when it's doing its official count, I don't think should include yeah. Good point. I agree with you. Um, and then the other thing I had was uh, I don't. Um, wait, what was, what was the other thing I had? Bob, uh, you're, you're on national television. You can't. Ha- you can't fun fall like that. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well. It's like that scene in, in network news. I'm sweating profusely. Uh, I mean, broadcast news. The, uh. Which is a great movie, by the way. I rewatched it not long ago. Um. Uh, thank you for the I give tip. up. When in doubt, talk movies. Um, yeah. So, anyway, that's. I think that's all I have to say about Republicans. Yeah, there's surprisingly little to say. It's because it's such a mess. I, 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 I uh, in order of likelihood, what, what's your list? McCain it's and then Romney? The likeliest... Is Giuliani I, dead, I dead, would, dead? I, I would say Romney... He's not dead, 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 but I think his... his, his he has to win Florida. His historical, if he doesn't win Florida, he's dead, 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 His right? historical role here is to kill McCain in Florida. It seems to be he and McCain draw from the same pool... And he could take McCain down to twenty percent, and then McCain's dead in Florida. That's my hope, anyway. But I think it's—I I do think Rudy is is very unlikely to be the nominee. So he's on life support. If he doesn't win Florida, he's dead, dead, dead. Something like that. Um, okay. But he—you know—he could conceivably win Florida. It's not out of the question. Uh, he's no, very, I think it's not out of the question. The more debates they have, the better he looks because he's a human being. At least he comes across as a human being in the debates, unlike, say, Romney. And uh, so, you know, he still has a chance, sure. Um, even Huckabee has a chance, apparently, because there's so many evangelicals around Orlando. You know, the people. Well, that's it. That's that. There's also the Huckabee scenario. I mean, it seems to me if you keep enough people in the race, right, 
Huckabee could conceivably come out of Super Tuesday ahead, right? Because he's got this hard core of, like, what, 20% of the party or Interesting something? Interesting point. And so if everybody stays in through Super Tuesday, he could come out of that ahead. It's, I guess it's possible. I haven't thought that far ahead. That's but then like he'd still be in trouble. What? It's two weeks away. You can't expect me to think that far ahead. Sorry. Um, I forgot about the short time horizons of the poor. It's, it's of, 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 of people who follow politics this year. Um, I, it, it, you have to think that McCain and Romney have the advantage on Super Tuesday because McCain has the name recognition and Romney has the money over Huckabee. And if Huckabee loses Florida, he sort of looks a little loserish. And he's got those great stories, man. Frying a squirrel in a popcorn popper doesn't get much better than that. I missed that one. Oh, you did? Yeah. It was on our site, the video, too. We linked to uh, the YouTube of it. Yeah, sorry. He says in college, remember college, when they, in our day, when you weren't allowed to have anything more high power than a popcorn popper in your dorm room? I remember that. Anyway, for that reason, that was his utensil of choice in, in cooking his squirrels. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, got it. But a popcorn popper uses a lot of power. Makes but not as much as a bona fide hot plate. Not as likely to start a fire as a hot plate. Right. It's more thermostatically controlled, okay. I think. I think it just makes for a better joke. There's that, too. Um, but no, it was true. I remember. All you could have was a popcorn popper. Okay. I, I'm, I'm that old. You have, the um, hard, you have the hard scrabble pass, Bob. I don't. I did, you're right I, about that, I grew, buddy. Up, I grew up in Beverly Hills. On the wrong side of the tracks they, in they, Beverly Hills. They let us have hot plates there. Yeah, it's to say the least. And fine china. Um, um, so, um, so the economy. You, uh, are you in touch with with the global free fall of stock markets today? Did you pick up on that? I saw it as a buying opportunity, Bob, but I didn't place a call to my broker because I had to prepare for no, blogging heads. I've got something better for you to invest in than conventional stocks, Mickey. We'll talk after the show. Is it Jill Sabio's next album? No, I was thinking about a video website. I'm in touch yeah, with. Okay. Um, um, KBW, but. What? KBW. Exactly. Um, but anyway, as we tape this, the European market fell big time after last night Asian markets. We're talking 5, 6, 7% drops in the markets in like Europe, Hong Kong, Japan, India. Japan's was only four. But we're talking, um, getting a little alarming here, and... The question arises, what, uh, I mean, I assume this just almost inevitably helps a Democrat in November. Is that your view? Uh, I think so. Yeah, assu assuming but, assuming it, the, the apocalypse continues to unfold. Well, I'm not sure. See, I mean, there, if you read Paul Krugman's blog, which I, I, I highly recommend, because even if he's wrong, he gets you uh, thinking. My, my thinking was always, stimulus always comes too late. In other words... If we wanted to stimulate the economy, we should have started three months ago. Uh, now it's sort of almost too late, and by the time Congress acts and the money gets to the pipeline, chances are the economy will be recovering anyway, and it'll only add to inflationary pressures on the upcycle. That's the standard skepticism about stimulus packages. They make the politicians look good, everybody seems to be doing something, and they mobilize, but it's really too late. Uh, Krugman's contrary point is that, well, you know, the Bush... The Bush recession actually lasted a couple of years, and Bush's point is that his tax cuts did come in time to boost the recovery. So that's the, the contrary argument. Go ahead. So it's well, that's his argument, but there's another argument about – I'm not sure if there is this argument. If there's not, it seems to me, on like, based on my limited knowledge of economics, there should be, which is that uh, the origins of this crisis have something to do with the budget deficit which was exacerbated by the tax cuts. I mean, tax cuts create a short-term stimulus effect, but create the long-term problem if they, if they contribute this, to deficits. How is this I thought this crisis was caused by the subprime housing market. How is that related to the budget deficit, which is pretty small in our case well, relative to GDP? Uh, hey, you want a scenario that ropes even the Iraq war into this thing, Mickey? Love it. Okay, this is totally... I haven't seen this anywhere. This is just from a guy who took Econ 101, okay? Okay. Uh... I, it seems to me that the, su the subprime crisis uh, 
Well, first of all, there are there were all these mortgages given irresponsibly, and they kept doing it, and they kept doing it. But 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 when things really started falling apart is when the time came to refinance on these not refinance, I guess, but the expiration, the fixed period of the mortgages expired, and they were and then you're subject to market rates. And as it happened, the market rates were higher than these people had hoped for. Right. So one thing you could ask is what contributes to high interest rates. And I think uh, a budget deficit does partly because the government is then in the credit markets borrowing uh, money, right, and, 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 and having to raise interest rates. And another thing that does is the Iraq war because it makes the government borrow, it exacerbates the deficit. It makes the government borrow even more money. So I think you could say, there's a couple of ways you could, you could blame this on the Bush administration. It seems to me plausible that one is to blame the budget deficit on them, both because they're, they're irresponsible tax policies and because of the Iraq war. Um, the other path would have to do with things that should have been done uh, in a regulatory way. Uh, and there I'm a little hazy because I don't know how many of them uh, are, are, are within the domain of the Fed, in which case you blame Bush for reappointing Greenspan. Um, and how many of them are, are, you know, should have been done by, I don't know, executive order or, 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 or whether Congress is to blame. I'm a little hazy on that. But, but I think Greenspan had at least some regulatory power he didn't use. And there's also the complaint that he just uh, he helped foster the bubble rather than uh, cracking down and raising interest rates back when it been, would have been uh, bearable when the pain would have been bearable, and he would have nipped the bubble in the bud. I think that's a, a line of argument. That's always easy to see in hindsight. The, I, I, does I, I was never convinced of the argument that uh, the budget deficits contribute all that much to interest rates. It depends if the rest of the world is willing to come in and finance our deficit, right? Uh, and maybe they're all pulling out now, and that's the problem. But. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, but, but this opens up another card for the Democrats in November. They can play the nativist card because, and not in a totally irresponsible way, because it isn't this time around. It's not just that uh, foreign foreigners are investing, which, as we've seen, kind of time and time again, is not that alarming. But these sovereign wealth funds, it's actual. It's the government of China that's buying our assets. It's the government of Saudi Arabia, and that is a slightly more. Uh, Slightly more alarming prospect when you think about it. It is, but it, compared to the size of the U.S. economy, is it that big? And have those appeals ever worked before? I'm not so sure. Uh, it, well, that appeal has never been available because these sovereign wealth funds have never really been a player. Uh, the, no, I understand, but it's sort of the same as you know. It's a, it's a, it's a slightly stronger variation of the appeal that about the Japanese buying up America during the Reagan years, which never seems to win any elections at the national level for the Democrats. The um, the, uh, the interesting th thing to me in the economy was, you know, everything's moving faster in our society. Information flows, adjustments are quicker. Shouldn't that work to make recessions shorter? In other words, you know, all of a sudden some external shock happens and the markets go berserk. But they should adjust much faster because there are millions of new arbitrageurs and they're all connected by computers. And everything should happen much more faster, which should mean that it restabilizes Quicker, shouldn't it? And we actually, if you, I bet if you looked at the at the recession versus, uh, you know, growth cycle, recessions have been shorter and and farther between in the last couple of decades than they were in the previous two decades. Uh, um, maybe I'm wrong, but so I, I it, it, it's I'm not convinced that this is going to be a long enough recession for if there is a recession for, uh, you know, for the stimulus to arrive in time to have a positive effect. Well, I certainly don't think the stimulus is a big deal. It's already been laughed off by the global markets. That's what happened with this crash, is they were laughing at the stimulus package. Yeah. Not laughing, they were crying. I mean, but, but the, global, the global verdict on this stimulus package has been rendered. Yeah. I mean, when the, when the threat to the system is so much psychological, in other words, will there be a panic sell-off, I mean, when, when the threat of true... I mean, we've got a problem regardless with this subprime meltdown, but... When the threat of, of true apocalypse has so much to do with psychological factors, the big gauge of, a, of an initiative like the stimulus package is, does the world buy it? No, they don't. They said that within the last 24 hours. 
Well, that's, um, but they could change their mind in the next 24 hours. Things are volatile. They, they could calm but, down, and it, and it may, be, may be good that today was a holiday. Happy MLK Day, by the way. Thank you. Um, With, uh, I have, it, uh, because the, the U.S. Uh, so the U.S. market will have time to reassess. But, but that actually gets to your point about doesn't everything happen faster? Well, yes, but that means panics can unfold well, faster, that's why too. I, that's why I think we need to have a standby authority like the Fed for fiscal policy that can inject the stimulus right away, like in, in, in this case it would have been a month ago, uh, to, to accompany monetary policy. It would have, it could, you know, have discretion to reduce the payroll tax by a couple of points. It could have a list of public works projects ready to go at the federal level, uh, and, and it would just start them, and it would be like the Fed. It would just do it on its own, and if the Congress didn't like it, they could stop it. But at least then you have some chance of it having it happen on time, Whereas now there's much less of a chance. Uh, I haven't seen an argument why this is so, such a bad idea. So wait, this is an executive branch body yeah, that be can an be... There'd be an agency like the, called the Pump Priming Authority or some fa fancier name than that. And it would, it would it, like the, just as the Fed can adjust interest rates, it would have the authority to lower the payroll tax by a few points. It would have to raise it back later as the Fed has to raise back interest rates. But it, it could, you know... Send some more money into people's paychecks by cutting their tax by right, right away, and then Congress could veto by majority vote. Well, just the same way it can veto the Fed. It never does because the, you know that would be considered uh, a very bad signal to the markets. But if you put this power in responsible hands and, and eliminate, you know, and insulated it from the public pressure just to always goose the economy. It seems to me uh, that it could work. There's no reason why it shouldn't work just as well as the Fed works. Uh, uh, I, I didn't realize Congress could veto the Fed, but uh, you're probably... Well, Congress can do anything it wants. I mean, if, if they can get the president to sign it, it's not a legislative veto. It has to pass a new law, but... Um, the, well, right, but, but presumably with this other thing, you would not want them to need the president's authority to veto, or else you're talking about a really extreme concentration of power, well, of right? Of course I would. It's not extreme concentration. It's only, it's only the power to lower the tax rate a couple of points. It, it's, 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 the power to control tax rates without any, any legislative... Uh, well, the Fed power. has the power to control interest rates without any legislative... Uh, I mean, I mean. Well, no, it doesn't. Literally, it has the power to control the money supply, okay, but it, which actually, which actually is far from direct control over the interest rates that matter most. But it doesn't have control. It, it has a lot it, of it power. Bob. It, You're not going to argue that the Fed doesn't have a lot of power. It has a lot of power. It has um, a lot of power. You want me to uh, but, say something that, that ties this entire conversation up? Um, I have I have two more quick points to make about stimulus. Okay. One is the Democratic position is. Get cash into poor people's hands because poor people spend it. I agree with mm -hmm. that, but it's, if, if it goes to people who aren't earning any money and who pay no taxes, it sounds an awful lot like welfare. So there's a problem with that for Democrats. They should stick to rebating Social Security taxes, which all workers pay, uh, as opposed to just income taxes. Second, uh, this idea of aid to local governments being the solution to stimulus, that only works if you're sure that if you give $100 million to a local government, it's going to add $100 million of new public works. But that obviously isn't going to happen. They're going to, they're going to just use that as a general federal subsidy. They might not engage in any new public works at all. So that they're two, both of the, 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 the choice democratic solutions have big problems. I'll I have through. to take your word for that. I'm through. Those are Krugman's no. two solutions, so I'm being... I'll have to take your word for that. The, um, uh, but you're going to tie it I all would together. Say, I would say that that that, that uh, if we can pin some of the blame for this on Alan Greenspan, and there seems to be serious opinion that that's possible, I would like to revive uh, McCain's quote from the last presidential election. Do you remember on the on the issue of whether he would reappoint Greenspan? I don't remember. He said uh, he alluded to some movie. Maybe it was the Duddy Crest. Some movie I haven't seen. Oh, it was. Uh, it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. The apprenticeship of. And uh, I thought it was Bernie. Was he going to prop him up dead? Yeah, yeah. Whatever movie he says. He says not only would I reappoint him, but if he were dead, I'd put sunglasses on him and prop him up like in some movie. Weekend at Bernie, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. it. That's it. That's it. Okay. It was also the same. Um, the similar principle as. Uh, uh, Kurosawa's film Kagemusha, but anyway. 
Wow. Never mind. The breadth of your knowledge. Uh, but, uh, but 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 from it, high it, culture to low, we were going to talk about Tom Cruise. Right, you, you have more it, to this was tying it all together. You're going to tie it well, all together. Well, tying the economy back to the election one more time, kind of. Yeah. yeah go ahead. Kind of. No, I just did. That was it. That was my point. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. That's pathetic. I know. I'm sorry. No, uh, I apologize in advance. Okay. Well, let's let's get now, some hits. Let's talk about Tom Cruise. Okay. I, I want to talk about some viewer comments, so we do have to get Cruise out of the way. Uh, so he had this uh, video that you were, I guess, uh, kind of um, illustrating for us earlier in the dialogue. Was that it? Correct. It was a subtle paradox. Where I, I'm kind of thinking maybe you and I will have common reactions to this much-viewed video. Now, first of all, what exactly, was this something he had done for Scientology recruiting purposes that was supposed internal, to be kept I, I confidential? I think it's an internal Scientology sort of pep rally sort of thing. And then somehow it got out. Correct. And 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 basically, he's singing the praises of Scientology, how much it's done for him, what kind of person it's turned him into, and so on. Well, also, what was you? I'm, he, he's also uh, ex, 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 expounding on their sort of uh, either you're in or you're out, sort of top down, a hundred percent, very strong sort of central discipline uh, theory. They don't, they're not big on dissent within the Church of Scientology. And he's sort of saying either you're on board or you're off board. So yeah. he's playing ideological. Um, unlike, say, unlike, say, the evangelicals who, who welcome debate about whether Jesus was the Son of God. Um, I, I mean, that's kind of my overall reaction was how different was he in that video from a whole lot of religious people? And, and, and you've, you've just brought up something that hadn't actually occurred to me, that that you're in or you're out language uh, reflects on the kind of famously, allegedly authoritarian creepily authoritarian nature of the Church of Scientology, I say allegedly because one of the manifestations of this alleged authoritarianism is to sue people who don't put the word alleged in front of every negative thing said about the Church. Um, they, allegedly, I, I hadn't, they allegedly sue people. They allegedly, they allegedly sue people who, who fail to note, as I just did, that everything bad about them is only alleged. Um, it just seemed to me it's a lot easier if you disagree with your pastor to form a schismatic Christian church than it is to form a schismatic Scientology church. In fact, you see no Scientology, schismatic Scientology churches. So it really is you're either on the bus or you're off the bus. Uh, it, yeah, so I, but I think I mean, dissent within Christian communities is a little easier. Maybe not in the earlier Christian communities. I don't know. But it seems to me But the was. you're in or you're out thing is characteristic of a lot of religions. I mean, I have to admit, I hadn't thought of... I mean, what I was focusing on is things like he said, you know, if you drive by an accident and you're a Scientologist, you think, i got to stop and help. And that's exactly the kind of thing a lot of Christians would say, you know. Um, but the thing you're focusing on, I think, is also a lot like, like the rules in a lot of church. There are some things you absolutely have to believe. And if you're a newcomer to the church and they're trying to recruit you, you can ask questions and you can say, wait a second, but how can you be both the Son of God and God himself? I'm having trouble visualizing this. And they explain it. But if you keep asking those questions, they don't want you in their church. I mean, and they're just, there are these litmus tests like that. Um, okay. You're the authority on religion. But to your saying... So I don't, I don't, I don't see how different... I mean, in a way, it was his demeanor. He, how uh, well, you know how how he had this slightly crazed look in his eyes on a few occasions. But again, I, I think you could find that in the eyes of a lot of religious and non-religious people. He also in there. seemed to be sort of acting in a bad way. I mean, he's a good actor, and this was bad acting. I thought he, he was clearly trying to please, yeah, whoever wanted that video to be a powerful recruiting device. Uh, but um, no, I agree. I'm not. I'm. I'm. You know, is is the difference between the beliefs of Scientology and the beliefs of of, of the Church of Latter Day Saints? Is that a black white dis uh, distinction where one is crazy and the other is not? No, it's like a spectrum of craziness. Uh, so uh, this idea that Scientology is a cult while other religions are just religions is is uh, is highly suspect. I agree. I think it's probably true, or I think it's allegedly true. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> but anyway, there is this allegation that the Church of Scientology just plays hardball in a number of ways that most churches well, don't. And I'm not. It's weird. I am. I'm not saying that that's. 
This is allegedly untrue. This is a bad discussion because I am actually scared of the Church of Scientology. And you're closer to the heartland than I am, buddy. Well, also, I'm just, right? I'm just the sort of, I'm, nobody cares about me, but I'm just the sort of little fish who get, could get picked off as an example, right? Mickey, Mickey, we all care That's about you. That's how I you. feel. That's how I feel about a lot of things. Um, you know, but, um, so. It, no, we'd notice. I, I, if you didn't show up for a dialogue, I would sound an alarm. Don't worry. We'll send out a patrol after you if you ever turn up missing, buddy. Thank you, Bob. But, but you know, who would be responsible? There's so many well, suspects. Well, you, if you fail to insert the word alleged in one of these <laughs> sentences so, you uttered, I guess. There's so many suspects. Um, it is interesting that, um, good for Nick Denton that he he was sufficiently ignorant of our nation's libel laws that he put up that video and kept it up. Um, but somebody took it down. Everybody took well, But I think he, uh, he put it up with a very strong statement saying this will not be coming down. Uh, but but some people, for fear of litigation, did did take yeah, the video. And I assume down. it's copyright litigation that would get him, not not libel litigation. Hmm. hmm. But um, uh, we'll see. At the moment, he's a hero. Okay. The, the other the other thing that's interesting is people who deal with the Scientologists in Hollywood, and there are a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Say they're really pleasant to deal with. Who knew? So what do I know? So uh, don't, leave I don't, know. I got to don't leave dead animals on my door, please. The only what? Hello? You still there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, good. I'm getting this call waiting thing that I'm ignoring. Well, that's probably the Scientologist. That's Bert... Starts that's with the area code is 000. That is a little... That's Bert uh, Fields on the line with the cease and desist order. Well... Okay. Uh... I will consult my lawyer. I, I, I want to uh, do a little viewer comment. I know you hate it when I talk about comments. Well, I just sit there and roll my eyes, but go ahead. It's okay. to roll my eyes. You want to start the rolling now? I actually don't know how to roll my eyes very effectively. Give it a shot. Well, I'm doing it. Okay. It's happening. First of all, news from, the, news from our comment section. You know, Abu Nur Al-Irlandi has given some thought to starting a blog. I knew you'd be interested in that. And B.J. Keefe gave him some advice on, on starting a blog. And and that's, one thing he said, because B.J. Keefe, the prolific really, commenter B.J. Keefe, has a blog, as you may know. That's really and 1999, it, Bob. What? That's very 1999. Starting a blog, yeah. and that's when you did it, right? Correct. Oh, that was a cell phone. So so this other call must have been from somebody who did know, who like knows me or something. Man, the Scientologists, they'll stop at nothing. It's they're gonna be coming Scientologists, in, man. They're going to be coming do in your not, windows. Do not. Do not leave out the word alleged when talking about the Scientologists. <laughs> that was an obvious joke. They'll be allegedly okay. knocking on your door soon. Okay. Um, so anyway... I'm wondering if you if, if you if this rings true with you, what B.J. Keefe says. The posts that seem to generate the most interest are often the ones that I put up with little thought at all. Have you ever put up a post with little thought at all? Well, the posts that often generate the most interest, they're not posts you put up with little thought, but they're posts you think, oh, that's right not fast. worth putting up. I'm, I mean, it's short, but it's not important, and then that'll be the one that people are interested in. Well, it, remember back when you and I were uh, columnists? Yeah. Remember those days when we alternated the TRB column? Yeah, boy, those were the days. Those were the days, and, and, and it, 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 was, it seemed like the things that started out in your mind as just notebook items, not column-worthy, right. made the best columns, right? Yeah, well, there, there, there's sort of two rules of blogging that you've, you've reminded me of the second one. The first one is the old beatnik rule that first thought, best thought. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, you have a conversation with the readers. The way you put it in your first thought is generally the best. Any revisions are going to probably make it worse. So that, that, that sort of goes with blogging and the immediacy of blogging. You just post it right up there. You take advantage of that rule. But the other rule is last thought, best thought, which is the little sort of little thing you stick in at the end just because it makes you giggle is usually the best line in the piece. So, so just cut out the middle thoughts. The middle thoughts suck. I mean, yeah. yeah but Okay, so we pass that advice on. Yeah. Uncle Ebenezer, uh, having watched the aforementioned uh, Michael Hirshhorn John Fine dialogue, mm -hmm. you know, and then and then uh, by the way, you know, Michael Hirshhorn just started this new production company, right? I do. 
ish entertainment. He's going to focus on reality TV. Uncle Ebenezer says, I can't really stand reality TV, so I'm afraid I'll soon be a cranky old man who gripes that there's nothing good on TV nowadays. And I'm only 34. But then again, I like to read and watch blogging heads, so obviously I'm an outlier. Should we take that personally, do you think, Mickey? That, that, that I mean, is that like saying that only marginal people watch blogging heads, or is that like, is that, is that like outlier in a good sense? I, he, he just means in his taste, but we are reality TV. I know, exactly. I mean, what could yes. be more real than this? Right, but we're non-trashy reality TV. Speak for yourself. I was. Um, but anyway, he, he doesn't mean that in a bad way. It is true that... It is true that if you run into somebody on the street and they say they're a fan of blogging heads, don't you immediately sort of... I call the police. <laughs> Check it, yeah. No, actually, yeah. actually, I think we have a pretty good demographic. You know the numbers. Hey, we do, actually. What's our... We did an online, we did an online uh, survey. What's our average... We actually have good demographics. I'm not kidding. I what? mean, much better than I thought. What's our average income? Am I supposed to disclose this? Let me just say... No, you're not. ...that I'm pretty sure... That in terms of education and income, we're up there with the New York Times. I would think, at least. At least. It is at least, actually. I think a little, frankly, uh, you know, better. But I mean, people have to at least own, a, like, a, a, a computer, so. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if the smart business person does disclose these things widely, but we've got them. There's an actual, you know, link I can send to prospective advertisers that has these things. You have a glossy And, and that, could, that could bode well, you know, for the continued survival of Blogging Hits TV if we have good demographics. With your, your mysterious business plan that nobody can quite figure out, yes. It's, a, it's an ad-based revenue model kind of thing. Uh, it's, it would be more possible if you had actu any actual ads on the site. Uh, yeah, but then the mystique would vaporize, and that's what's keeping us going. Okay. We'll have ads pretty soon. You'll make it up in volume. Okay. We'll have ads pretty soon. Okay. A couple of other things. You know, we had this dialogue featuring Rick Arndt, this uh, evangelical homeschool advocate who uh, has fathered 14 children by one woman. Can you imagine, Mickey, fathering 14 children by one woman, first of all? Yes. I can't imagine can? being a woman. Are you imagining it now? Should we shut off the cameras? No. I mean... <laughs> I, um... It's 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 mothering fourteen children that seems impossible. Well, I know. Well, and there's this line in the dialogue where he says, "I have to tip my hat to my wife. I couldn't have done it without her." And yeah. And your point it's is. It's true. But anyway, here's what I want to say: it is he was given a pretty hard time in the comment section by some commenters, um, who I, I think assumed that that um, I mean, one thing you should know is that the adult. Uh, sons, almost all these 14 are sons, and the adults among them have vowed to remain virgins until they get married. And, uh, and it, so the it, commenters assumed that he, there, there was some kind of cult-like mentality here, and he, and he had imposed these values on his kids by you know, sequestering them somewhere or something, right. which I think is not the case. But anyway, after these bursts of outrage, um, some commenters uh, said some, I thought... Uh, very generous things uh, toward him stepped in, and one is notable. Uh, now, this, this will be a test of how much you know about our, our viewers, Mickey. I predict you're not going to do well. Okay. Blog and Noggin says about this guy, this guy's your classic, serious social conservative, okay? Right. Republican-based social conservative. He springs to the guy's defense. He says, you and I disagree with some of Arndt's values, but the mere fact that we think his values are wrong doesn't show that he must have been unduly co coercive or deceptive in the methods he used to inculcate them in his children. Very, very nice post throughout toward this guy, Rick Arndt. Now, why is that particularly notable coming from Blog and Noggin, Mickey? Uh, you don't know. Because he's, a, I don't know. I get, my, I, he's, I get my commenters confused. I'm sorry. He's gay. And needless to say, Rick Arndt does not have an especially favorable attitude toward don't, homosexuality. Don't you mean to say allegedly, Bob? Well, he alleged it himself, but okay. yeah, well, allegedly. No, I don't mean to say that because that 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 seems to attribute you know negative connotations to homosexuality. So no, I don't mean to say that. I mean reportedly I, by him. I'm not surprised. I'm not at all surprised that a gay man would be be tolerant like that. It just it doesn't seem like it's like a dog bites man story. Oh, is it? Okay. I mean, I mean, I know because uh, I know all these gay conservatives. I mean, they're yeah, but Blind Noggin's not one of them, buddy. Okay. 
Uh, fair enough. Another thing you didn't know. Uh, and similarly, one swell foop, whose name is not one fell swoop, but one swell foop, joined in in kind of, kind of defense of the guy, and wonderment did too. Wonderment says, when our kids played at their houses, meaning Christian homeschoolers, we didn't have to worry about the mom planning them in front of the TV for four hours to watch MTV, nor did we have to worry about them learning racist jokes, getting into the dad's porno collection, or his stash of weed, all of which happened in secular households. And this is actually the thing, you know, I was kind of hoping to emerge um, from the whole discussion, is that actually uh, a lot of parents, secular parents and just non-evangelical parents, actually have some of the concerns that evangelical homeschooling parents have. There's more, more converging, including liberal parents. And this is something I'd like to see stressed more than get stressed, is that a lot of Democrat, liberal parents, you know, Tipper Gore, you know what I mean. Right? Right, well, that's, isn't that the Plano point? I mean, Plano is filled, Plano, Texas is filled with conservative, very religious people who, but basically the Democrats could take a whole chunk of them because their values and the values of Ordinary non-religious parents are, are not all that different. Yeah, this is what I wanted to. This is what I tried to emphasize after the '06 election. Is it's really not about religion per se. You know, people are saying, does the Democratic Party have to find religion? No, and it doesn't have to cave on the issue of homosexuality or anything else. I just think you need to convey to conservative, social conservatives in the Republican Party that. A lot of Democrats share your concern about things like Britney Spears being a role model. Well, Justin Timberlake, they have to condemn Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson. That was the sister soldier moment. You and I were on that boat from together from the beginning. Um, and, and I would just like to say, and, and it really bothered me that there was so much, so many liberals sprung to the defense of Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson because... It was supposedly censorship if you right. criticized what they did. That was the boat. And as you know, if you saw the thing, the irony of feminists springing to their defense was that what that was was like an act of stylized rape, sexual Absolutely. aggression, right? Absolutely. 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 Either you're, on, and either you're on the boat or you're off the boat. <laughs> That's what I say. Yes. No, absolute, okay. Completely right. Just to drive home, Mickey, the learnedness of our uh, commenters, the commenter Laura writes, in reference to a Rosa Brooks dialogue, the word census is fourth declension, so the plural is census, which is why we don't usually hear the sensi that Rosa struggled with. I'll bet you don't get comments like that on your blog. No, you? man. That blows me away. That's what I'm saying, man. Our demographics. And we, we tell advertisers this, you know. I think If you have ancient Latin texts to advertise, we this is the place. Or, or, or modern Latin, like Lexus, Bob. That would be a good Latin word to see deployed on our side. Excellent idea. Point out that we we have viewers who know what the plural of Lexus would in theory be, so they could buy more than one. That's a, absolutely. There you go. Absolutely. Well, Mickey, I they, think on that note... As a friend of mine said, they could do a Lexus search. Never mind. That would be a good gimmick um, on, your, on your side, a Lexus search. Uh, also, Pasiborus and Abu Nur, the aforementioned Abu Nur, Al Irlandi, had a constructive uh, exchange on whether uh, Obama would be an apostate. Apostate from what? Muslim. Oh. Uh, Abu Nur, Al Irlandi, pointed out that Obama has never said he ever was a Muslim. Uh, and has, in fact, quite emphasized that he never so much as prayed in a mosque, he, sa he says. So... Um, and good ex good exchange among Baltimore on and Wonderman and M.V. Anthony on Israel's Jewish state, blah, blah, blah. And then, oh, come on, trashed you. But uh, we're running out of time, so I'll save that for another day. What did he trash me for? Oh, well, as long as you ask. Um, it was about you you on New Year's Eve trying to scare us about the, uh, you know, the, the, the hordes of invading Mexicans who are going to take over our country. Actually, Bob, you know... You know, you know what country is upset about the hordes of invading Mexicans? Tell me. Mexico. Because they're losing good workers? No, because the workers, good workers are coming back over the Arizona border because Arizona cracked down on employers, and there's a reverse migration back to Mexico, and the, and the legislators from the state of Sonora, I think, whatever state is south of Arizona, 
sent a delegation to Arizona saying, please stop these Mexicans from pouring across our border. We don't have jobs for them. Hmm. So, in fact, the uh, even the Mexicans don't like the hordes of invading Mexicans. So, sort of hmm. undercuts the, oh, it's all nativist racism argument. Hmm. So the Mexican government is against Mexican workers. Well, the Sonoran and government. And so by that logic, we should be against American workers, right? We should send our workers. I think we do. I'm, I'm, lost, I'm lost in thought. I think we do send our workers abroad and they send the money back home. Okay, well, my question is, by the time this posts, will the stock market free fall have continued for another round? In the, I, I tend to doubt it. They... they I tend to hope not, yeah. anyway. Well, it's your job to post it quickly instead of holding it for days like you did the last one. Well, Sorry. that was by design. The last one was taped as a New Year's uh, dialogue okay. a week in advance, Mickey. I used to be a big cheese at blogging ads, but now I don't get service. What can I say? Uh, I'm not bitter. Beg your pardon? It's lucky I'm not bitter. Beg your pardon? I used What's to your be last a... name? Let me... I'll look you up. I used to be a big wheel around here, and when I said post this immediately, it got done. Now... Oh, there's this blogging heads bureaucracy it has to go through. We might, maybe we'll post it tomorrow, maybe next week. Mickey, I'm, it's the pictures that got small. I'm joking. Me too. Uh, uh, I love you. You know uh, that. Uh, you're supposed to say I love you, man. <laughs> uh, oh, I love you, man. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Same here. Okay, next time. See ya. See ya.